What's up guys, so a while ago I did a video on all the parts on the Yaris and a lot of parts have changed since I did that video. So I'm gonna do another one and this time I'm gonna tell you how much everything costs. So by the end, you'll know exactly how to build this exact Yaris, where I went wrong, the stuff that I've gotten rid of, and maybe even how much I could sell it for. Okay, so I've got a list here. I've got the purchase price of everything that's on the Yaris. This doesn't include fluids and it doesn't include repairs and it doesn't include the stuff that I needed for the manual swap. This is strictly about the mods. We'll go through the mods first. I can talk a little bit about the other stuff, but everybody wants to know about the mods. So we'll start with one of the most expensive things on the car and one of the newest things, the BC Racing coilovers. With shipping and everything, that costs $1,582. I then spent another $58 on damping adjusters, which come out of the cowl. Next up is all the Cusco parts that just went on, the front sway bar, the rear sway bar, and the top hats. So it was 261 for the front sway bar, 233 for the rear, and the top hats were 210. I got a big discount from Cusco because they sponsor the TRD series, so that's a big part of that price. They should be a lot more, and especially because the Yaris is not something that's super common here, they had to ship those parts in from Japan. If you wanted them quick, that'd be an extra like $200 of shipping. On the engine, I have a set of pulleys from Nonstop Tuning. They're lightweight pulleys, so there's less parasitic loss. That whole kit cost me $248. The in-gen intake is one of the earliest things that I put on the car. It's one of the only things that's still on the car from my original mods. That was $240, and it sounds cool. Nonstop Tuning also hooked me up with an oil cooler and relocation kit. They gave me a little bit of a discount. I don't remember how much it was, so the original price of it is a $228 oil cooler. But that kit comes with some very long lines and I have a very small engine bay, so I spent about $70 on different AN lines and fittings and adapters and all that stuff. Next up are the 1ZZ parts. These were all pulled from the junkyard, so it was 20 bucks for all of the spark plugs and 20 bucks for the throttle body. Next is the ECU tune. The ECU tune is from Chris Taylor Racing. They're based out of Texas. Um, Chris Taylor does a lot of the B-Spec racing cars, the Mazda 2, and I think the Honda Fit as well. He does tunes for all of those. Uh, and he's one of the only guys that I've seen that have a tune for the Yaris. The rev limit has been raised and the tune is designed for that cold air intake. So I'm getting a little bit more power. I still haven't actually gotten to take the car to the dyno since that tune has been put on. But if you wanna get a tune from Chris Taylor Racing, it'll cost you $325. I have two NRG seats. They are some pretty cheap fixed back seats and I got them for about $400 used. There's not much damage to them. Someone bought them for uh, somebody else and they wanted a different color. So I got them, I think, kind of cheap. But then I needed brackets from Planted to mount the seats into the RS and that cost me $307. In the car right now, I have a wheel from Momo. Momo is a sponsor of me and the car and this channel. So they gave me a discount on the wheel. The wheel is originally $249. The wheel I used to have, this NRG wheel, is about a hundred bucks normally. So if you want that instead, this is great for drift. Um, it doesn't grip your hands as well and it's a little thicker. Um, it's good for like sliding through your hands when you're drifting, but I don't have a drift car. Next, we're gonna go into wheels and tires. I've tried some different combinations with this car, and of course, tires are a wear and tear item. You're gonna need multiple sets if you're gonna keep on going racing. So I'm just gonna give you the numbers and we can go through the totals later. My 15 by eight Koenig Hexaforms, which is what I'm running now, were $540. I got a little bit of a deal through Fitment Industries. They helped me out. They got those shipped just in time for me to go to the Laguna Seca. Um, they're really cool. You should check them out. The Koenig Heliums, which were 15 by six and a half, were about $450. And I honestly bought those on Amazon. You can get cool wheels on Amazon. Who knew? Those Heliums were wrapped in Toyo R1Rs, which didn't end up being my favorite tire, but they were fun to start with. They were $573. 
What I'm running now are the Hankook RS4s, which cost me about $607 for a set of 225s. And with wheels and tires, don't forget that you're also gonna have to pay to get them mounted. So call that $80 every time you get a new set of tires. Another thing I've got from Nonstop Tuning is a short shifter. They sell all kinds of short shifters. The one for the Yaris is $86. The JDM cluster that I have that only kind of works is an absolute steal. I got it for 40 bucks because it was in with a bunch of other stuff so I didn't have to pay shipping. So it's a really cool piece, I doubt it'll be as easy to get at 40 bucks, which is okay, because it doesn't totally work in my car anyway. I do have a separate digital tachometer in the car, which was 50 bucks on Amazon. The lightweight battery that's in the back was $186 from Braille, and the bracket specifically designed for it was another 40 bucks. Then I spent $50 on things like zero gauge wire, terminals, and everything you need to do a battery relocation. The gauges up front, which are one of my favorite pieces on the car, are all from AEM. I have a voltmeter, an oil temp gauge, and an oil pressure gauge. The voltmeter, $122, the oil temp, $179, and the oil pressure gauge, $206. But they fit so well, they're perfect for this car, and that's one of my, like I said, it's one of my favorite pieces. The headers that are on the car were $250. What, I've, what, are you saying you've never seen anything about headers on the car? Uh, it's because they're not on the car. They're right there. Um, I'll, I'll put them on eventually. I bought the headers used. I don't know the brand. They're probably some knockoff brand, but I'm gonna try them out, see how they work. As far as chassis stiffening, there's a DC Sports strut bar up in the engine bay, which was $95. And there's a Megan Racing bar on the C pillar, which is about $65. I've also got two sets of camber bolts up front. They were $30 each, so 60 bucks on camber bolts. Then I also have control arm bushings up front from White Line. They were $20. And then they were another $20 to get pressed in. I have a Mishimoto thermostat, which was $58. Stainless steel brake lines, which were 65. I'm on my second set of rotors. The ones that are on there currently were about 80 bucks and my original drilled and slotted rotors were about 140. Also on my second set of brake pads, which were about $92 for the Hawk HPS pads. Yes, you can spend a lot more and get more bite, but I don't need much more than these, so I'm gonna stick with them for now. So obviously this car was originally an automatic. When I did the manual swap, I used mostly OEM parts. The only part that is aftermarket and a mod is the clutch kit and the pressure plate. That is from ACT, it's a stiffer clutch, and I'll include that on this list because that is a definite performance part. I'm probably not using it to its full potential, but that was $345. Then there are some things that aren't on the car that it's worth talking about. The original coilovers that we had for this car, the Teen Street Advance Zs, were $650. They made a big change to the car. They were fine for autocross, but once we started to get really serious, they just were not stiff enough. I technically did buy a roll cage at one point that was $200. That is a terrifying number for a roll cage. And that's why I didn't install it because every fabricator that looked at it told me it was an absolute death trap and would make the car more deadly than it already is. I've also got the Corolla calipers up there, which are about $200. They will go on the car eventually. I need to figure out what to do with the rear once the front gets that much more braking because I want to keep the brake bias where it is. So that project hasn't really started yet, but they're around. So with all of that taken into consideration, there has been $10,000 of development on this car. And as it sits, it's about $7,500 worth of mods. But the point is that the car itself is pretty cheap. And if you find yourself a manual for less than three grand, you could have exactly this car for about 10K. Now, there are still some recurring costs that you need to know about. Every time I change the suspension in any way, I probably need a new alignment, and a new alignment is $150. I go down to a race-specific alignment shop, not just a normal alignment shop. They can dial in my camber as well as my normal settings like caster and tow and they can give me specific camber for the amount of grip that I want. Chetworks does an amazing job. The reason I reached out to them is because they've done a lot of front wheel drive civics, so I know that they know what they're doing when it comes to making a front wheel drive car fast. So if you've got a alignment shop in your area that can fit the kind of car that you're doing, be sure to go to them. Don't just take it to like a normal alignment shop. 
Jetworks also does the corner balance on this car as well, and every time I take it in for an alignment, I usually get it re-corner balanced because I've shifted weight around. For instance, the battery relocation, we haven't had an alignment or quarter balance since that's been done, so we need to do that as soon as possible. And then you gotta think about towing. This car right now is really uncomfortable to drive on the road. It is not something that I would recommend. And getting rentals from U-Haul and stuff is probably gonna be 150 bucks minimum. And that's if you already have a truck to tow and you just need a trailer. And then of course there are a bunch of other recurring costs, fluids, tires, that kind of thing. But that'll all depend on what you're running and what you're using. And then we haven't talked about the main expense, the actual cost of going to the track. Around here, track days vary in cost, and the TRD series is usually run with a group called Speed Ventures, but not always. Speed Ventures has pretty consistent prices, but some tracks charge more. Streets of Willow, one of the cheapest tracks. I think it's about 200 bucks every time we go, but Laguna Seca was over $400, and it was still just a one-day track day. So all in all, last season, I spent $1,500 just on track days, and that doesn't include gas getting there, hotels if we needed them, lunches, meals, that kind of thing, filling up your cooler, making sure that you're not overheating out there, all that kind of stuff. Plus, you're gonna want some tools for all of this, and that is its own can of worms. I've got the workshop here, and then I've also got a case that I take with me for racing so that I have enough tools with me at the track, and then I have everything to do installs here. But that's about it. Track days cost me $1,500 a season, so I would say with a fresh set of tires every season, a couple times staying in a hotel and all that, I would say probably the cost of four grand within a year to run this car at track, and then it was about seven and a half grand to build it. Now again, this car has had some OEM parts replaced. I replaced the bumper, I replaced the doors, I replaced the transmission because I made it a manual. All that stuff, I'm kind of not counting in. You can go and find a car to start with and then just add these prices on afterwards. If you want to drive a Yaris, you might be able to find one between two and five grand, depending on how nice you want it to begin with. If you're looking at another platform, the ones that are gonna cost about the same would be, I would say, the Honda Fit, maybe the Miata. Miata's a little bit more expensive. And if you get lucky, maybe a Mini Cooper. But that's everything that's on my car. There's stuff that is gonna go on soon, but the car's kind of at a happy spot right now. It's all just tweaking. Unless, of course, you know, I blow up an engine and have to completely overhaul everything. Did I just jinx myself? I think I might have just jinxed myself. Well, I mean, you know what that means though. If I have jinxed myself, it means I'm gonna have to make another video.